Welcome back to another week here at Central. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving weekend. Turkey soup, turkey kebabs, turkey pancakes. I'm not really sure about that last one. Anyway, good afternoon, Central. Let's get the newscast started. Well, we as Americans love our turkey. Almost 272 million turkeys gave up their little turkey lives this year so we can eat them up and use the leftovers for many, many days to come. 272 million, that's nearly one turkey for every person here in the United States. Anyway, the fam came over to my house and by the end of the day we were all full. But studies show that more and more families are actually going out to eat for Thanksgiving. With all those dishes and no place for leftovers in the fridge, some of us in Grand Junction found it was just fine to eat at Denny's, IHOP, or the Golden Corral. Cooking and all that, making the mess, we just decided to eat and shop. Also on Thanksgiving Thursday, the Salvation Army served up a rich tradition, feeding those in need. Turkey, stuffing, and everything that goes along with it were plentiful at the Elks Lodge in Grand Junction. The Salvation Army's volunteers served up nearly 1,000 piled high plates. And what would Turkey Day be without a little football action? The Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions faced off on Thanksgiving, and the Packers held off the Lions with a 37-26 victory. The second game going on was between the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Jets, this one with a 34-3 win. The final pro game of the night was between the Colts and the Falcons in Atlanta. Colts taking the win on this one, 31-13. And all this brings us to your Central Talks back poll. How did you spend your Thanksgiving? I'll have your thoughts and comments coming up in next week's newscast. No news here, as we all know, Junction still getting a little bit more of a break than maybe they deserve. And they won't have to make it up at the end of the year either. Actually, the teachers have to go back today to rearrange all their lesson plans, but students are still out until December 3rd, next Monday. And this week's Focus on a Candidate we're taking a look at former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney. Before he became a politician in the mid-90s, Romney was a big businessman. He's either invested or bought out companies like Staples, Brookstone, Domino's, and the Sports Authority while he was the CEO of his investment management firm. He stands out on the general conservative values, fiscal support for the Iraq War, he's against gay marriage, he's for gun rights, and above all, he's for family values. The ideal setting for raising a child is a home built on a marriage between a loving mother and a loving father. Now is the time to pass a federal marriage amendment to protect marriage in all 50 states. Now he's been criticized for flip-flopping on abortion. However, when he was governor for Massachusetts, Romney was very moderate on his view of abortion. But now that he's running for president, Mr. Romney has taken a much harder stance against it, saying that he only agrees with abortion to save the mother's life. Now let's get into the issue of abortion. This one is one of the most heated topics of all. First, a little history on it. On January 22, 1973, the U.S. Supreme Court decided that in the landmark case of Jane Roe v. Henry Wade, it was unconstitutional for the United States to intervene in a woman's right to choose whether or not she has an abortion, so long as the doctors can prove that the fetus can live outside the mother's room without her assistance. But we hear it everywhere, from national demonstrations right down here to the corner of 12th and North, what we should think as a country about abortion. Pro-choice or pro-abortion supporters want America to realize that it's completely up to the mother to decide what to do and that the government should have absolutely no say in what a mother can or can't do with her body. On the other side, pro-life demonstrators say that from the very first moment of conception or very shortly after that, an embryo is conscious of what's going on and furthermore could become a fully developed human and by aborting it we're taking that right to life or future right to life away. It's a really heated topic, making a bill that classifies abortion as murder or legislating something that gives every American woman the right to choose. So whether you're voting or not next year, make sure you know about this topic. Agree or disagree, so long as you feel that it's the right opinion for you. Well, thousands of acres have burned near Malibu, California, and nearly 50 homes were destroyed. But now some evacuated residents have returned home 
Residents began making their way through back streets and dirt roads this afternoon into evacuated areas of this upscale community to see whether their home survived a wind-driven wildfire that scorched surrounding brush-covered hills. Some homes along a road near the source of the blaze have been reduced to blackened wrecks, while others were barely damaged. More than 10,000 people still remain under evacuation orders. Now, investigators say the fire, which broke out along a dirt road off a paved highway, was caused by humans, but can't say whether it was started intentionally. The fierce fire burned 4,700 acres and injured six firefighters. Well, to end the newscast on a positive note this, this week, over the Thanksgiving weekend, Enchanted caught the top spot at the box office. The Disney fairy tale starring Patrick Dempsey earned more than $35 million this weekend. So, my dear, is there anything else that we need to do around here? Oh yeah, y'all want me to make something? No! In second place this Christmas with more than $18 million for the weekend and Beowulf. What do you know of me? Demon falls to third with more than $16 million. Now, a movie to maybe put on your list, though, is Stephen King's The Mist. Oh, my God. Something in the mist! Shut the doors! Shut the doors! Maybe if you're in the mood to be scared before Christmas, this seems like the movie to check out. Hey, thanks for watching this week. And, of course, you'll have more news coming up next week. If you'd like to give me any comments or maybe you have a story you'd like to hear about, let me know at kchstv at gmail.com. Until next week, I'm Connor with your KCHS News. Have a good week, and of course, take it easy.